Okay, we're just going to talk through tendon reflexes, and again, the mistakes made with the tendon hammer are being holding it too near the end, being too timid. You want to get really comfortable with the weight and feel of it of a tendon hammer. Even just to practice tapping it, just get the feel of it. It's really important before you go and um, start tapping reflexes in people. So remember the principle of a tendon reflex. You're trying to generate an accelerative force through a tendon, which is innervated with muscle spindles. You want to activate muscle spindles, which send a reflex rapidly up to the spinal cord, which synapses with a motor neuron that's comes rapidly down to cause a muscle contraction. Most people who lose tendon reflexes lose reflexes because of the sensory fibres. Because the ratio of sensory fibres to motor fibres is such that you can lose very few sensory fibres and lose a reflex. To get loss of motor fibres and lose a reflex is almost impossible. You'd have to have very advanced motor neuron disease to lose um, tendon reflexes from loss of motor uh, nerves. So the, the reflexes are ankle, knee, supinator, biceps and triceps. Now you, when you're doing a reflex you're trying to work out if it's absent or present. If it's present is it normal or brisk? If a reflex is brisk it may indicate upper motor neuron disease if the reflex is absent, it usually means problems with the sensory pathways. Most commonly, it's going to be sensory neuropathy. The confusing bit is, is that in an acute stroke or in acute spinal cord um, disease, you can lose reflexes just because the, the, the central nervous system tissue just completely stops functioning. Um, but generally speaking, you're going to be guided as to what disease you're looking at by the patient's history. You also need to know which nerve roots innervate each uh, reflex level. So there's an easy way to remember that. The ankle is number one. You miss out number two. Three, four, five, six, five, six, seven. That's why you do arithmetic to get into medical school. Of course, one is S1. Miss out two. Three, four is lumbar three, four. Five, six is cervical roots five, six cervical roots 5, 6, and, and triceps, cervical root 7. So the ankle jerk, the traditional way to do an ankle jerk, and ideally you should be looking at the muscle that's going to be contracting. The traditional way is to put passive tension in the Achilles tendon and then directly strike the Achilles tendon. That's actually quite an awkward technique and just as effective as to place your palm on the sole of the, of the foot and, and strike it that way. And that also gives you the advantage of the angle of swing. That's an unnatural swing. That is a natural swing. It's easier to do. So the plantar strike is perfectly legitimate as a way of getting an ankle jerk. And again, for people, older people that maybe have arthritic knees or arthritic hips, getting their, their foot into this sort of position to do an ankle reflex is actually quite difficult and potentially uncomfortable. For the knees, you want to put your hand under the knee so you're supporting the weight of the knee. End of tendon hammer, patellar tendon there. And if you hold, if you hold the tendon hammer along the length of the leg, you're, you're probably going to get your target. And you want a good swing up, swing down. Same again, weight of the legs. Again, your hands down towards the ankle. So the, the tendon hammer is usually about the length of an adult lower limb. Bring it up, bring it down. Just like that. Let the tendon hammer do its work. If you do this sort of thing, there's no acceleration, the reflex doesn't work. In the lower limb, the difficulty with the lower limb is getting to these tricep um, reflexes. So what you want to do actually, so you've got the radial head there, your um, brachioradialis tendon attaches there. You want to put two fingers just proximal to the radial head. And again, look how high the tendon hammer is going. Let the hammer fall. And you see there's a contraction there, and the hand makes a, a supination. And then on the other side, you want to kind of compare like with like. Again, usually a watch is in the way, but again, there's my fingers on the breaker radius tendon. Hammer falling from a height. You want to locate the biceps tendon with your thumb. Put pressure on it. And again, height, 
let the hammer fall. This one's quite awkward because you've got to reach across the patient, palpate the biceps tendon with your thumb, and again, let the hammer fall. To get the triceps then, you just bring the arms across now. That's the, that's the trick. You've now created plenty of space for the reflex. And again, see, see the angle there? See how much movement there? Hammer. And again here, see how much range of movement? Hammer. You get the reflex. The other reflex sometimes done in the upper limb is called the finger flexion reflex. If you, let, if you take the weight of someone's fingers um, and then just tap under, you sometimes will get a bit of a contraction that you can usually feel rather than see. And Hoffman's sign they talk about, which is a sign of hyperreflexia, you put your, you just sort of try and flick the distal phalanx, and what you see in Hoffman's is the thumb will flick in when you do that, and it's a sign of hyperreflexia um, as well. Other reflexes you can learn to do, you can do pectoral jerks, which are C6-7 innovated, and there's also your hamstring reflexes, um, um, at the back of your of your of your of your um, diagram. So that's the tendon reflexes. Um, thanks.